Ayan. So, yun. I want you to recall, no, a certain point in your life that, <clears throat> sorry, that you had an experience with different types of research methods involving, no, if you already saw the, if you scanned our book on this chap on the chapter five, no, I want you to imagine or to go back to that certain period that you encountered some of the of the devices or the technology, no, na nandito sa chapter na to, which is, which is used in research, no, in biopsychology. So there are terms that are very familiar, no, like the EEG or the the fMRI, di ba? Maybe some of you or you know of a person who already had CT scan, MRI, fMRI. Okay, so because I, I asked you to think about those times because today we will learn more about this technology and how amazing they are in the in our quest to study human behavior, uh, human uh, different processes no, in our brain. Okay, so today we'll be talking about the research methods of biopsychology. So we will understand what biopsychologists do. All right, so we have part one and we have part two. On the first part, those are the methods used in studying the nervous system. The second part, those are more behavioral, okay? So we have there some methods for visualizing you know, the living human brain. There are also those that are non-invasive, meron ding mga invasive, pharmacological, and looking into the genetic engineering. For the behavioral, we have naman testing, no? We know that, neuro neuropsychological testing. And I think these are the most common here in the Philippines because we don't have much access to those technology in the first uh, part, okay? And I believe wala pa ding nang nag offer ng biopsychology or even near neuropsychology or no no sorry cognitive psychology in the Philippines, okay? That uses this advanced technologies. So you can go to other countries, no, to study this in this way. All right, so we have the ironic case of Professor P. And when I I read that, I uh, know that excerpt that was given by our author, it's really ironic because he is a biopsychology professor, and he himself, no, had this tumor on his brain on the right auditory vestibu vestibular cranial nerve and it needs to be taken out so his auditory abilities and also his sensory no, no abilities were tested so it's a similar way those are the things that that biopsychologists do and if you want to pursue biopsychology no those things are really needed. So they used uh, EEG signals, no? They evoke, evoked in his auditory cor cortex by clicks in his ear. And they also measured, no? His hearing with various uh, levels of sounds and pitches. So they, they were able to um, assess na kailangan talaga na matanggal na yung tumor because it really affected his audition and even his yung sense 
even yung maging sensation niya sa kanyang face, di ba? It was also shared there. Okay, so it was disheartening, but it's also something that we can look into in our topic today. Because, kumbaga, he will be one of the subjects, no? Na may use in order to know more about those parts of the brain and also makikita natin paano nag-work yung biopsychologists. And don't forget, sabi ng author, don't forget Professor P because in the in one of the reports of your classmates about brain damage, they will elaborate further about it. Okay? Ayan. So we have, uh, as I've said, meron naman tayong part 1 and part 2. So, so dito sa part 1, we'll, we'll look into the more um, direct, okay? So direct way of studying the brain. So the first one is are the methods of visualizing and stimulating the living human, human brain. So we know that, I, I think all of us, no? Kasi one of the requirements for you to go to college, no? To, to enroll is to have an x-ray, di ba? X-ray, pero sa ano nyo, sa chest nyo, di ba? So, it's a chest x-ray. So, when it comes to the brain though, that kind of x-ray wouldn't be much of uh, a use kasi, umaga, maraming layers in brain natin and there's, there's a need for uh, more um, mas magandang klaseng way to to study the brain using x-rays. So, we have here contrast x-rays. So, they inject something that absorbs x-rays less or more than surrounding tissue. And one of the um, one of the ways is cerebral and angiography and this uses infusion of a radio opaque dye into the cerebral artery to visualize the cerebral circulatory system during x-ray photography they are most useful for localizing vascular damage but the displacement of blood vessels from the normal position also can indicate the location of a tumor. So, yun yung main function niya. And did you know, di ko na lang yung nag So, did you know, if, I think you already know if you read the book in advance, that this, this technique was uh, done, no? Was discovered rather by Egas Moniz. So, can, does it ring a bell to you? Yung Egas Moniz. Okay, so si Egas Moniz is uh, the one who also used pre prefrontal lobotomy. Okay? So, nandun siya sa ating first chapter, if you, if you can recall. So, that's our did you know today. <laughs> And there's also a question, diba? Kasi I believe most of you were like sad about the prefrontal lobotomy. That was, there was this excerpt, no, na sinasabi na, uh, dapat na, re na revoke sa kanya yung Nobel Prize because it wasn't really helpful, no, yung lobotomy. But, meron naman nagsabi, parang, but his, discovery of this process no, of visualizing the brain can also give him that Nobel Prize. So my question is, do you agree or not? So kayo na yung answer no, on your own. Alright? Another technique is the X-ray computed tomography. So this is computer-assisted X-ray procedure and it provides a 3D representation of the brain. So ayan, makita natin, no? We have there that big uh, 
uh, machine wherein nilalagay yung person, yung ulo ng person to that part. Tapos they are taking a lot of pictures, no? Of x-rays rather. Tapos you know, rotate yan so that they will have several angles of the brain. And they can create, no? Uh, they can create uh, even a 3D a 3D representation of the brain using that one. Uh, okay, so this is our CT scans. Okay. All right, so we also have positon emission tomography or PET. It provides images of the brain activity and it's the first brain imaging technique to provide images of brain activity rather than images of brain structure. Kasi yung first two kanina, yung mga CT and the x-rays, they were only for structures, okay? But here, ito na, sa PET, dito nag-start naman yung sa functions, what's happening really on the brain. And scan is an image of levels of radioactivity in various parts of one horizontal level of the brain. And a radio-labeled substance is administered prior to the scan. Okay, so they used the radioactive fluorodioxide glucose or FDG. Uh, it, it is injected into the patient's carotid artery. So it's an artery na nasa sa neck natin that feeds the epsilateral, epsilateral cerebral hemisphere. Okay, so this, uh, na in, itong ini-inject sa kanila, it has a similarity to glucose. The primary metabolic fuel of the brain. But fluorodeoxoglucose is rapidly taken up by active energy-consuming cells. So the fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG cannot be metabolized and it accumulates in active neurons or associated astrocytes until it's gradually broken down. So it makes also the, it makes the visualization na mas efficient because of this. Okay. So we have here an example of the PET scan. Yeah. So we have two PET scans there. So yung pinagawa nila sa volunteer is for for him or her to either open or close their eyes. So as you can see there, the areas of high activity are indicated in reds and yellows. And as you can see there, no, kino compare nila na when the patient, no, the subjects, sorry, the participants' eyes were open, nagkaroon ng activity. Okay, so meaning yung occipital lobe yung gumagana. Okay, so the visual cortex of the occipital lobe. Okay, so as you can see there, nakaaro naman. Another method of visualizing and stimulating the living brain is the magnetic resonance imaging. So ito naman, mas high resolution yung binibigay nila na images. And constructed from measurement of waves that hydrogen atoms emit when activated within the magnetic field. Okay. So it also can give two or and three three-dimensional images of the brain. And the images that they uh, give are better kumaga, than the positron positron image emission tomography or the PET scan. And a note here is that MRI is a structural brain imaging procedure. 
Okay? So, sa structure, siya nakafocus. Ayan. Yan yung examples, no? On the left side, we have there a 3D, dimensional images of the entire brain. On the right side, pinakita naman dito yung growing tumor. So, the, the tumor is color red. So, pinapakita talaga yung structures. The functional MRI naman, ito, hindi lang brain structure yung pinapakita, pati din yung activity. Okay? So, parang combination siya ng PET at ng MRI. So, it uses a strong magnetic field. And structure is image using waves emitted by hydrogen ions. So, kanina, kung yung MRI, hydrogen atoms, Dito naman, hydrogen ions. And the function is image using signal created from the interaction of oxygen and iron in the blood, which is called the bold signal. Bold signal stands for... blood oxygen level dependent signal. Okay? So, hindi yan rated SPG, ha? Blood oxygen level dependent signal yan. Okay, so here's what happens in the fMRI. So, first, active areas of the brain take up more oxygenated blood than they need for their energy requirements and thus, oxy oxygenated blood accumulates in active areas of the brain. And second, oxygenated blood has magnetic properties that influence the radio frequency wave, waves emitted by hydrogen atoms in an MRI. Okay, so yun, yun yung ano, pinagkukunan nila ng way to have the image of the brain. So mainly on the oxygen and iron. There are four advantages. Now, please take note of this. Functional MRI has four advantages over the PET or the positron em emission tomography. First, nothing has to be injected to the volunteer. Two, it provides both structural and functional information in the same image. Third, its spatial resolution is better. And fourth, it can be used to produce three-dimensional images of activity over the entire brain. So, alam naman natin yung pet, it's, it's, it doesn't really give us the structure. It's more of what's happening no, on the brain. However, no, there are disadvantages also of FM, fMRI. So, as we can see in the textbooks, no, there are... The bold signals are shown, not the neural signals. So, and because it has a poor temporal resolution, it is poor at specifying the timing of neural events. Because we know naman na an action potential, only it happens very quick, di ba? Milliseconds. But in fMRI, it can capture two to three seconds of an activity. So it's not an accurate, no, we cannot really go into the neural, uh, neural imaging of what really happens inside on the neurons. Okay, so here's an example of fMRI. Again. So, it illustrates the areas of cortex that became more active when volunteers observed strings of letters and were asked to specify which strings were words in the control condition. So, you control. Volunteer view, volunteers viewed strings of asterisks, the man on the other. Okay. So, again, fMRI illustrates surface activity. But images of sections through the brain can also be displayed. Okay, so it's we can really see it on real time. 
Another example is the diffusion tensor imaging. It's a method of identifying those pathways along which water molecules rapidly diffuse. So ito yung pinaka-reset na ginagamit in the field of biopsychology and neuroscience. No? So, kasi daw, as you can see no, in our previous no, mga uh, discuss, yung nakikita most of the time are structures, no? the structures of the brain. So most brain researchers also focused on that. However, in order to understand how the brain works, it's also important to understand yung connections no, of the structures, the so-called connecticum. And there's also this connecticum project, human connecticum project. And it's near its completion the now. And we also have uh, those methods of visualizing na merong kinakabit really on our skull. So one is the magnetoencephalography. So it's a measure of neural activity. It measures changes in magnetic fields on the surface of the skull. And it has fast temporal resolution. So kanina, puro mga structures, puro mga, mga uh, yung functions no, of the brain. Ito naman, neural activity. And we also have the transcranial magnetic stimulation. So, it's not a measure of neural activity, okay? But it provides experimental probe to alter neural activity. And PMS applies a brief, strong magnetic field that alters neural activity. So it can activate or deactivate brain structures. And we, we can use that to observe changes in behavior. Okay. And we have actually the transcranial direct current stimulation. So it is currently playing a major role in establishing the causal effects of human cortical activity on cognition and behavior. So as said, no, this can be this can be used no, to turn off and also to turn on areas of the human brain by creating magnetic field under a coil positioned near the skull. Okay. Ayan, yan yung example. Okay, so another way to record human psychophysiological activity is the scalp electroencephalography or the EEG. It is recorded through large electrodes by a device called electroencephalograph, so the EEG machine. So in studies of human subjects, each channel of EEG activity is usually recorded from disc-shaped electrodes about half a dime or parang, ano, parang 25 cents, kung titingnan nyo yan. And it's attached to the skull. So this measures me the gross electrical activity of the brain. So, bucket yung gross electrical activity of the brain because there is noise kung in the background background of the EEG. So what they use is they average no yung signals na nag, that they can get. So yung sabi nga ni Pinal in his in the book no na it's like you are measuring a whisper from a rock concert. So that's why ganun yung analogy niya. And another way that they, they use, no? That they may use this is to have a stimulus, no? Such, such, such as, as a click. And, they, and 
is recorded but many times. Sabi nga nito, mga umaabot ng 1,000 times. Then, a computer identifies the millivolt value of each of the 1,000 traces as at its starting point and calculates the mean of the scores. So, if you are already knowledgeable of basic statistics, diba, we know the mean. So, parang average mo lahat. And next daw, we consider the value of the 1,000 traces one millisecond from the start, for example, and calculates the mean values and it repeats the process at the second millisecond mark, and so on. So, matrabaho siya. Thank you for the computers who can do this. Okay. So, ayan. Other ways to use EEG is waveform assessment by looking into the alpha waves. We also have ERPs, the event-related potentials, and the combination of EEG with MRI. Okay. I believe one of the most used no, na, na technology in biopsychology and in neuroscience is EEG and also the fMRI or MRI. Okay, so here's an example of EEG and psychological correlates. So here it's the sleeping, no? or we, when we are awake or relaxed. Okay, so yeah. And we will have more in depth of those in other topics. Again, yun yung sinasabi ko na there's an averaging no? of the auditory evoked potential. Ayan. So on the on the right side, there's a click, no? So merong in evoke the potential. On the left side, ito naman yung average background of EEG. All right, so we also have other ways to record human physiological activity, such as muscle, muscle tension. We have here electromyography. So this is a technique to measure electrical activity of the muscles. And we have also the electromyogram that indicates tension of muscles under the skin. So, makita dito if the person is anxious, no? And, uh, another way, no, for muscle tension is yung tinatawag natin, um, yung sa, uh, yung line detector test. Okay, that's one, that's another way. But we know naman that there are a lot of tractors that may indicate if the person is lying or not. So the lie detector tests are not really uh, a good, good na na way to, it's not reliable, rather. It's not a reliable way to, to know if a person is lying or not. Okay? Another is for eye movement. We also have electro-oculography. So ito naman yung technique to record eye movements. And the electro-oculogram indicates changes in electric poten electrical potential between the front and back of the eyeball. So, ayan. So, ito yung EMG signal and the integrated version. So, the subject tends the muscle beneath the electrodes and then gradually relaxed. So, ayan. So, that's why there's a uh, umaga, nag-rise up muna and then nag-relax. And here's an example or an illustration rather of the electro-oculograms. No? Okay, ayan. Diyan yung mga areas na dinalagyan ng, ng kanyang equipment. Another is yung skin conductance, no? So, measures electrodermal activity. 
and also we have techniques that include measurement of skin conductance level and skin conductance response. So the physiological basis of skin conductance changes are not fully understood, but is conser considerable evidence implicating the sweat glands. Okay, so even though alam naman natin na yung we sweat in order to go back to homeostasis, di ba? Of our body para mag-cool down, but still, these glands tend also to become active in emotional situations, causing the, the sweat, the, re, the release of the sweat, that in turn increases the electrical conductivity of the skin. So it's also one way you know, to, to use in certain kinds of experiments. And of course, cardiovascular activity. So it's often linked to physiological changes with emotional state. So we have heart rate, you know, the man heart rate, the right? So the recording is called electrocardiogram. And a healthy adult is about, has about 70 beats per minute. And of course, you know, nag increase siya if there is something, you know, that, that arouse, you no know, official, an uh, emotional state. For example, there's a sound or punta kayo ng dentist, di ba? So, mag, mas tataas siya kung there's something like fearful na stimulus. Another is blood pressure. It's, it's a way naman to measure arterial arterial blood pressure that involves independent two independent measures a measurement of the peak pressure during the peers, periods of heart contraction so the systoles and the measurement of the minimum pressure during the periods of res relaxation so the diastoles so if you already went to the doctor the first na the nurse will get your BP. So, alam niyo yung ano, yung ginagamit, the spigmometer. Spigmomanometer. Basta yun na yung pang BP. <laughs> okay? And we also have the blood volume. So, parts of the body that is associated with psychological events. Okay? Okay, so before we go to that, um, let's have a quick break. Mga five minutes lang. Okay, so I'll see you at around 11.23 or 24. Okay.
Wait lang. Did you hear me? Hindi pa. Man? Did you hear me talking about stereotoxic surgery? Not yet. Not yet po. Oo, hindi naka-on ang aking mic pala. So, buti na lang, nakita pa. Okay, so, as I was saying, no, we are done with non-invasive <clears throat> physiological research methods. So, looking into the structures, the functions, neural activity, diba? But, we also have the invasive physiological research methods. And we can relate this on our example earlier, see si Professor P. Okay? But before we go to the different research, uh, physio invasive physiological research methods, we have to learn about the stereotaxic surgery. So the stereotaxic surgery is the means by which experimental devices are precisely positioned in the depths of the brain. We need two things. So Anita, now we have the stereo toxic atlas and the and the instrument for getting there so the stereotoxic atlas the reference point in in rats now the reference point is the brigma so the point on the top of the skull where two of the major sutures intersect so as we can see here no Okay, on our illustration, ayan, the bregma, yan, yan yung kung saan, ano nila yung procedure. Okay? And the stereotoxic instrument has two parts. A head holder, which firmly holds each subject's brain in the prescribed position and orientation, and an electrode holder. So, ayan, kikita nyo naman, no? electrode conductor okay so it holds the device to be inserted so a system of precision gears allows the electrode holder to move in the three dimensions so anterior posterior dorsal ventral and lateral medium again so there's really a need for the surgeon to know and to really memorize the different parts of the brain and the anatomical directions kasi konting ano mo lang konting ano mo lang na hindi tama yung yung direction there will be a lot of damages all right okay so there are different lesion methods we have bilateral and uni unilateral lesions. So there are several procedures requiring careful interpretation of effects. So first we have the aspiration lesions. So this is the frequently used no, the method in in the in this invasive physiological research methods in particular sa lesion methods so there is a lesion made in the area of the cortical tissue that is accessible to the eyes and the instruments of the surgeon okay so yung ginagawa dito is that the cortical tissue is drawn off by suction through a fine tip hand glass pipette. Because the underlying white matter is slightly more resistant to suction, suction rather, than the cortical tissue itself, a skilled surgeon can delicately peel off the layers of cortical tissue from the surface of the brain, leaving the underlying white matter and blood vessels undamaged. Okay, so pipette yung ginagamit dito. And pinipil of yung layers ng cortical tissue of the brain. So hindi niya sinasama yung white matter and other blood vessels. 
The next one is the radio frequency lesions. So if yung nililesion are small subcortical lesions only, ito yung ginagamit. So they use radio frequency current through the target tissue from the tip of the stereotaxically positioned electrode. The heat from the current destroys the tissue. So yung galing sa radio frequency current, yun yung nagde-destroy sa tissue na yun. Okay? So parang sinusunog siya. So the size and shape of the lesion are determined by the duration and intensity. So gano'ng kahaba or gano'ng intense yung current na binibigay and the configuration of the electrode tip. The third one is knife cuts. Okay, so we have there no, on the left, left image the subcortical knife cuts. So... Sectioning or cutting is used to eliminate conduction of a nerve or track. A tiny, well-placed cut can ambiguously accomplish the task without producing extensive damage to surrounding tissue. Okay. But there's that ano, question. Now. How does one insert a knife into the brain? to make a cut without severely damaging the overlay, overlying tissue. So, ayan. Yung ginagamit nila is very, very maliit na knife. Okay? So, para hindi ma-ano yung iba, ma-apektahan yung iba. Yan yung ginagamit nila. And lastly, we have the cyrogenic blockade. So, this is an alternative to destructive lesions, okay? So, when a coolant is pumped through an implanted cyroprobe, pareho yung nandito, okay? We have there the cyroprobe. So, the neurons near the tip are cooled until they stop firing. So kung kanina, yung sa radio frequency lesions, heat naman yung ginagamit, dito naman, it's more of a coolant. So the temperature is maintained above the freezing level, so there's no structural damage. Then, when the tissue is allowed to warm up, normal neural activity returns. So it's, it is functionally similar to a lesion in that it eliminates the contribution of a particular area of the brain to the ongoing behavior of the subject. And it's sometimes referred to a reversible lesion. Reversible lesions can also be produced by microinjections into the brain of local anesthetics, such as lidocaine. But we have to be very careful no? on interpreting the effects. Because we can say na, okay, there was only one part of the brain that was lesion. So therefore, yun yung main, kasi after ng lesion na to, behavioral and also cognitive abilities are observed. So we cannot really conclude at once, no? parang cause and effect na, okay, na lesion yung amygdala. So therefore, your aggression, no, and other things should only be attributed to that part of the brain. We cannot conclude that way. Because we know that, diba, just like in the aspiration, the knife cuts, and even the other, no, not major lesser yung kanilang effect uh, or damage on the other, other parts no the lesion, there are still things that also, that were damaged. No, there were parts of the brain that were damaged. So, we cannot really just say na, okay, itong part ng brain, ito yung nag, ano? So, meaning, ito lang yung, ito lang, ito yung mga nangyayari sa person. Ito yung mean function ng, or, ng part ng brain na yun. 
All right. Okay, so we also have electrical stimulation. So electrical stimulation may be used to activate a structure. So para yung kanina din, no? similar lab, uh, almost similar no? on the EEG. Pero ito, it's more it's more on it's more invasive kasi electrical it's stimulation talaga on the structure. And stimulation of a structure may have an op opposite effect to that seen when the structure is lesion. Okay. All right. So we have invasive electrophysiological recording methods, no? So ito naman, it goes to the the membrane of the neuron. So it's more neural the mga activities. We already had no um, an introduction last time sa so chapter four na merong mga recording methods na dinalagay sa intracellular and also on the extracellular parts of the neuron. So here. We have intracellular unit recording. So we have the membrane potential of a neuron, the extracellular unit recording, it's for the firing of a neuron, the multiple unit recording, we have the firing of many neurons, and the invasive EEG recording. So meron ding EEG na nilalagay talaga inside. Okay? Ayan. So those are examples, no? of the records that they got. Okay. We also have, of course, pharmacological research methods. So here naman, they look into the routes of drug administration. So usually, they fed to the subject or they inject through a tube into the stomach of the subject or it may be injected hypodermically to the skin, no? So, for example, in the peritoneal cavity of the abdomen or in the fat, fatty tissue of the skin or into the large surface of a vein of the subject. And we also have selective, selective chemical lesions. So how do we measure uh, chemical activity of the brain? So, kanina, we already know that there are the, uh, there are certain na uh, inject no to the person so here's another example the 2 deoxyglucose technique so on the animal it's injected and it's allowed to engage in a behavior or interest so it uses autoradiography to see where radioactivity accumulates in brain slices and we also have cerebral dialysis. So it measures extracellular con concentration of specific chemicals in live animals. Okay, so aside from looking into the structures of the brain, it's the functions, the neural activity, and also using lesioning, we wanted also, no, we already had a glimpse before on the other chapters na we can also go into the what happens no ano yung route ng mga neurotransmitters ng mga receptors ng brain so we use dye or radioactive labels no yung missile stains ano pa ba yung gold stains no gold stick stains okay and use it to visualize the protein of interest and we also have immunocytochemistry, so based on the binding of labeled protein-specific antibodies. So dito naman, tinitingnan nila yung immune response of the antibodies that bind and destroy antigens or the foreign proteins. 
Okay? And we have also the in situ hybrid hybridization. So, dito naman, tinitingnan naman nila yung RNA. Okay? To locate neurons with complementary messenger RNA. And we have genetic engineering. Okay? We have also... Um, uh, we also tackled this, no? So, in gene knockout techniques, so subjects missing a given gene can provide insight into what the gene controls. Okay? And we also have this difficulty in interpretation. Okay? Kasi kung pareho kanina na yung sa lesioning, we can't really say, no, conclude at once that a certain part that was lesion causes a certain behavior or certain thoughts or personality changes. So similarity also, if um, if a person is a give a missing given gene, so we cannot say that that gene alone is the one responsible because we know that most of our behaviors are controlled by many genes, okay? And just altering one is not really, uh, we cannot really conclude that it's the one uh, that makes, no? That makes the person do that. We also have anti-sense drugs that block expression of genes, okay? And we have gene replacement techniques. Dito naman, some pathological human genes, no? Yung mga, uh, some, may something wrong sa genes ng human beings. It's transferred to the mice. And then, they are treating the mice. Okay, with that certain, na linagyan ng genes na yun. And we have the fantastic fluorescence and the brain bow. So these are green fluorescent protein that exhibits bright green fluorescence when exposed to blue light. So there are variants of the gene for GFP that, that can express other colors. So these GFP genes can be inserted into DNA of neurons. So color can then be viewed when targeted neuronal genes are expressed. All right. And, okay, we are already on the part two, no? So, yun yung first part. Now, on the part two, it's more related to um, cognitive and also behavioral, okay? The, test, the kinds of biological researches. So, we have neurologic, neuropsychological testing. So, we know it uses different kinds of tests, no? But it is time consuming because only a, only conducted on a small portion of those with brain damage. And we know na mahirap talaga mahanap yung mga tao may brain damage. So they can be case studies, no? Or, or basta in, they can be, we, we really need to find those people. No, with those kind of brain damages. That's why it's time consuming. Uh, we assist in diagnosing neural disorders. It serves also as a basis for counseling or caring. So yung mga results ng researches na yun. And it provides information on effectiveness and side effects of a treatment. And we also have other modern approaches to psychological testing. So we have single test, uh, standardized test battery, and customized test battery. So on single test, we use, use to differentiate brain damage from functional psychological causes. In standardized test naman, no? uh, just like the Hull state rate So this use uh, these are used for organic causes no, of brain damage. Okay? Customized test batteries, so a combination of different naman ng mga batteries no, that um, researchers wanted to 
to test a certain person with brain damage. So it characterized nature of psychological deficits. So here are some common tests. No? We have, of course, for intelligence, the YEs, for IQ, the digit span, subtest, no? still from YEs, then language. So problems of phonology, syntax, and semantics. So we have subtests also there. And of course, the language lateralization used to identify language dominant hemisphere. So pending uh, using sodium amethyl, so, so uh, anesthetize one hemisphere para hindi siya gumana. And then yung isa lang yung gumag gumagana and then the person is um, tested. Then we have dichotic listening, no? So, ear contralateral to dominant hemisphere shows superior hearing ability. So, for example, yung sinabi sa ng author natin na we have two earphones, tapos yung isa sa right, ibang set of numbers, yung sa left, ibang set of numbers, and then the person will recall the numbers that were given. So, kung saan yung mas marami silang na-recall, mas dominant yung ear na yun. Okay? And of course, memory, we know naman that we wanted to know the short term, long term, or both, uh, during an accident, no, or a brain trauma, um, what happened if it's, it's anterograde, no, or retrograde, uh, kind of amnesia, for example, semantic or episodic, uh, explicit or implicit, no, is it, um, Yung mga facts or yung mga memories naman, no, that, that has emotional na mga na underlying, no, are still there, no, or procedural, okay, those things. Language, as I've said earlier, frontal lobe function. So this one is an example of the Winsconsin card sorting test. So it's either sorting them by color, by shapes, or numbers. And we also have behavioral methods of cognitive neuroscience. Okay. Okay, so here, these are results from combined, no, of combined activity of simple cognitive processes. So, okay, so the, I, the goal is to identify the parts of the brain that mediate various constituent cognitive processes. Okay, and usually these are paired you know, with PET or fMRI. So that we will really know what specific parts of the brain are, are used by a person or a, a non-human subject in their in this and uh, other studies so again so meron tayong open field test test for aggressive and de defensive behavior or sexual behavior just like yung sa pinakita ko na last time no yung Coolidge effect then traditional conditioning of course no the Pavlovian we already know about that operant conditioning self stimulation um, condition based aversion, okay? so uh, other learning paradigms, or the radial arm maze. So, ito naman, more on spatial, okay? spatial learning. And the water Morris maze. And the condition defensive brain. All right, so, so that's it for the chapter five. So, basically, what we have 